who has standard level here? Okay. So, Rami, you just, um, you probably have to go for that thing. Because kinetics for standard level is, all, I mean, it's almost the same as GCSE, but for high level it's quite different, so we'll have to press on a little bit more. So what is the rate of reaction? Well, the rate of reaction in chemistry is, rate of reaction is usually uh, given in uh, units of moles per decimeter cube per second. So in other words, it's the change in concentration per unit time. And that's just a convention. In fact, of course, we could measure rate of reaction in any units we wanted. Because all a rate of reaction is, is measuring the change in a quantity over a unit of time, isn't it? So, of course, I could measure the mass of something produced, if I was able to do that as a reaction proceeded. I could measure the volume of gas given off. And I remember, I'm sure you will remember at GCSE, doing an experiment with... Um, magnesium and uh, or um, calcium carbonate chips uh, and acid produces a certain quantity of carbon dioxide and the volume of carbon dioxide over time gives you the rate of reaction. But now that we're, you're at the sixth form, basically when we're looking at correlated reaction, we're really, we're, uh, as a sort of default position, we're looking at the changing concentration per unit time and usually per second. Okay. Now, collision theory is very straightforward again. You know this as well from GCSE, but you do need to know it again here in the sixth form. You need to be able to explain this idea of collision theory, that in order for particles to react, they must collide. They must collide. They must collide. So that's the first point. Scribble these down. They must collide. They must collide with sufficient energy. So first of all, they have to actually hit each other with sufficient energy. And that's called the activation energy, the EA. And also, they must collide with the correct orientation. It, especially if you've got a big molecule. If you've got two big molecules striking one another, it's no good if the reactive bits are... If the reactive bits of two molecules are at the, the lid ends and two molecules collide, it doesn't actually matter how hard they... Well, not quite. It almost doesn't matter how hard they collide, the energy with which they collide. They're not going to react unless those two reactive bits actually collide, you, they collide with correct orientation. And that's quite important <coughs> as well. So those are the points for the collision theory. And what we do is we use something called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution to help to explain what's happening with uh, energy of particles and how the collision theory can be applied. So what we say is, we say up here we've got the number of particles. And here we have the... KE, or kinetic energy, of the particles. <clears throat> now, what we find with our Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is we find that if we take any, uh, say, a sample of gas, we find we have an almost normal distribution of the energy of particles. So we almost have a distribution like that. And that would be a normal distribution, not drawn particularly well, but drawn reasonably well. Are you all comfortable with the idea of a normal distribution? Okay. But in fact, we don't quite have a normal distribution with our Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. We actually have a normal distribution which kind of tails off a bit and doesn't reach the axis because we find that these particles, are, obviously, there are no particles with zero energy, but there are particles with higher energy. And so we find that uh, at temperature T, or mm, let's call that T1, temperature T1, we find that is our distribution. Okay. Now we have at, s there at a certain kinetic energy, so um, we often mark it on this chart, don't we? We mark the activation energy. Now remember, that's a little bit dubious, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but we mark the activation energy on there. I mean, that's actually the kinetic energy of the particles there. The activation energy is the energy of the collision. But I think what we do is we say, well, you know, the particles, both, two particles colliding, both of them have to have that energy. You know, that's our arbitrary energy, which we're marking as the activation energy on our Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And it means that every particle above that marked activation energy has enough energy to 
react when it collides, providing it collides with the correct orientation as well, of course. But everyone's happy with this so far, yeah? Now, when we change the temperature, of course, we change the distribution of our Maxwell Boltzmann, and what we find is that we shift the distribution towards the high energy end. So what we've got to try and do is we've got to try and draw it with the same area under the curve, but just <coughs> spread out a bit more. Okay, and this one is quite a that's T2. That's quite a higher, quite a significantly higher temperature. And that shows that what I've done is I've dropped the maxima, of course, because um, I've spread it out more, so I can't have it going to the same height. Otherwise, I'd have more particles underneath it, which I haven't. I'm just changing the temperature. But what I do is I push it out. And as you can see, temperature has a quite significant effect because now there's a lot more particles that can overcome the activation of energy. So we can use this to, we can use this, uh, this diagram here, maxwell boltzmann distribution, to help to explain how temperature affects the rate of reaction. So sometimes you'll be asked to explain how temperature affects the rate of reaction. So you need to be able to sketch this graph. This is whether you want it, regardless of what level of chemistry you're doing. You need to be able to sketch the maxwell boltzmann graph and explain it in terms of the maxwell boltzmann graph. But also, you need to be able to talk about it in terms of collision theory as well. So you need to be able to say that if you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy of the particles. That means that they move more faster, and also, and therefore they're more likely to collide, so there are more collisions per unit time, of course. But also, it means that the collisions have more energy themselves. And so therefore, temperature has, tends to have a very significant effect on rate of reaction. And if you have done it about the... Arrhenius equation, and you've put some numbers in, I mean, you don't have to, but if you ever do decide in the moment when you're bored, if you put some numbers in the Arrhenius equation, you'll find that uh, you know, rough, rough idea of 10 degrees C increase in temperature will double the rate of reaction for, for a regu fairly regular reaction. Okay, so we've got temperature. Now, what about other effects? Well, what about concentration, effect on, of concentration? Well, the effect of concentration just means that you have more particles in the same volume for our kinetic energy, for our collision theory, and so there's going to be more collisions. Now, the collisions won't have more energy, but because there'll be more collisions, the rate of uh, reaction will increase. And if you're actually thinking about concentration, usually people don't uh, talk about the maxwell boltzmann distribution for concentration. All you're really doing is you're just making your curve, the whole curve, bigger because you've got more particles underneath it. Now if you've got more particles, then you have more particles that can uh, Reject. that can react, okay, that are reaching the activation energy and so the rate of reaction is faster. But actually the proportion of particles that are reacting won't be any different, will it? I mean it's an interesting point, okay. Uh, if you increase the concentration, the only reason you increase the rate of reaction is because you just have more particles. Okay, so there's a faster rate of reaction. But actually, it's still the same proportion of particles that uh, is reacting. But anyway, uh, so that does increase, of course, still. It does increase the rate of reaction. You just you see you have more particles that are reacting. Uh, what are the other things you have to learn about? Well, uh, pressure. Well, that's just the same effect as concentration, but in gases. Um, what else? Surface area. So surface area is, um, if you've got a solid, of course, and again, really, it's just, a surface area is just another sort of concentration effect in a sense, isn't it? It's more particles that are available to react. So again, you'd explain that in terms of your collision theory. More particles are on the surface. If there are more particles on the surface, there are more particles that are available to, to collide. If there are more available to collide, then there are more reactive collisions, and therefore the rate of reaction increases. And the other thing, of course, is the effect of a catalyst. And this is uh, quite significant, because what does a catalyst do? Well, a catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway. And we'll talk about reaction pathways in a second. So a catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway of lower activation energy. And so you find that if you put in a catalyst, you have Ea cat. 
So you have the cat the 